So we we, we just okay. So like I said, we we're not gonna include the new album. Like I said, we it's not fair just yet. I mean, no, right, right. now if you rank it, it'd be last place for you. Um, we took out also S both S and M's, um, and that and makes me so mad. Why don't you not tell me that? I, I would have added to it. We want to do that. Well, I like the way I like the way it's it's just the studio albums. That's, 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 because, that's to me, because to me, S and M, you're like picking and choosing the greatest hits of every single Metallica album, right? But in in taking away S and M, you take away like two of my favorite Metallica songs of all oh, time. No, no Leaf Clover and uh, Minus Human. <laughs> well, no, No Leaf Clover and Ecstasy of Gold. True. True. I um, love. I oh, love that, Ecstasy of that Gold. version. Of that version, you mean the the classical version of that? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> um, and I, of course, you you threw S and M. You got you got to throw in live shit too. I love live shit from Metal yeah. City. But for sure. Okay, so three, four, five, what? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So eleven. Eleven records. We're going to rank eleven records. Although they have twelve records, but we're going to rank eleven of them, including Garage Inc., which is just a, a cover record, record for record. But so we'll go twelve to one, and we'll just discuss it. Uh, what is your eleventh favorite Metallic album? Hardwired to self destruct. I, you're gonna hate. You're gonna hate me then. Oh my god! No, it, it, music is subjective, right? It's, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 what it is. Um, it's not to say it's bad, but it's like it doesn't connect with me. I don't feel like there's any songs on this album that are like Metallica songs. Yeah, like maybe maybe now that we're dead. Maybe Moth into Flame. I love that song. Hardwired solid, but to me, it's just I feel like it was it, it tries to be kind of a uh, a palate cleanse of like, hey, we can kind of do what we can do a rock album. And I mean it's it's to to use a phrase from one of my favorite documentaries, some kind of monster, it feels kind of stock. Like it <laughs> it's stock. It feels kind of stock. Okay, Lars. It feels kind of stock. stock. <laughs> What does no, that mean, um, Lars? <laughs> yeah. So let me say this real quick. I will say that the second half of the record, a lot more filler than the first half of the record. Like the strength of the right. album is definitely on the front end of the record. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. Um, for me, eleven is state anger. And for the record, let me say for the record, there's not an album I don't like. I love all these records for different reasons. Yeah. For the summit, or I like more than others. State anger to yeah. me, um, of course. I think the songs of the album are actually very underrated. The songs itself, the structure, the lyrics, all that. If the production was better, um, for example, and by the way, for the record, they purposely did, 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 did this way. They they purposely went and created a garage sounding record, but it was way too off left field. You know, when Lars's snare sounds like a fucking folders can, you know, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, but the album, the songs itself are, are really good songs. Right. You know, my, sure. my first my first song on the, on the album is um D- Dirty Window, which they played on the, on the actually on that tour, thank God. Um, I believe they debuted the song on that on that on, on, at my show, if I'm not mistaken. Um but um, yeah. Saint Anger is actually a very underrated record. I, I feel like it, that album actually ages a little better now. When you, know, so, when, you when you actually see though how the band's has, has formed since then and everything that's happened to the band in the last twenty two years. So yeah, I've got I've got Saint Saint Anger a little bit higher, mm-hmm. and but but there's still enough room to talk about other stuff before of we get there. So number ten for you, Zoo. All right, number ten, Garage Inc. Okay, okay. Let's cover, let's cover I record. love, I love covers, but to me, like I don't, I don't love British rock. <laughs> like I don't like to me, everything that I could, I could, t- I could literally just all that goes away. Garage Inc. is literally a two-song album for me, with "Turn the Page" and "Whiskey in the Jar." <laughs> Really? That's it. The That's two, it. The two hits. See, the so hits. for me, for me, it's actually astronomy and Sabracadabra. I actually love yeah. Roger, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, like Roger, like I understand that like it's it's good. Like it, it is it is solid. And like I listened to it again recently just doing my homework for this. Mm-hmm. But like Discharge, an England band, Diamond Head, British Rock. I'm not the biggest Sabbath fan. I'm not a big Misfits fan. I get it. Like, I don't necessarily care for 
a lot I'll of say, I'll say this. Oh, Tuesday's I, you know, gone too. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's not a bad Ashley. I'll save my uh my commentary for when I get to Garage and Combine why why I like it and what the things that's done for me. Number 10 is Kill 'em All for me. Again, I love Kill 'em All. And actually to be honest with you, the song that got me into Metallica in the first place is out off this record. You you, you assume okay, I got a Metallica at eight sixteen in nineteen ninety six. Is it oh obviously it's Enter Sandman or what is no, no. The song that got me to Metallica was the four horsemen. Yeah, and so uh, Kill 'em All is my number nine. Okay. So it's it is a great introductory album to Metallica. Mm-hmm. Um there's like this is gonna this is gonna like be weird, but it's like there's no hits. Seek and destroy. Yeah, that's, um, that's one of the biggest songs. That's, they play live still to this day, every show. Yeah, I mean, I I know Seek and Destroy partially because Sting used it for WCW near the end of his tenure. That's right. That's um, right. but everything else, like I listen, I again, I listen to, I listen to every album back. Yeah. As soon as the homework was assigned, because I was like, man, there's a lot, because a couple albums that like I haven't heard in a long time, and Kill 'Em All is one of them because it always, it never really like set into me. Like as being a decent album, but there's a couple really good tracks that I listened to before that really like turned me back on to, um, to the album like mm-hmm. Whiplash, uh, Metal Militia, Anastasia. Like, it's amazing. Pulling teeth. Yeah, Close like fucking. I mean, it's not quite yeah, Orion, no, but it's definitely amazing though. Oh, well, we'll talk about that. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kill them all, though. I will say, um, obviously, it's an older record. It's the production. Obviously, it's it's, it's pre first like, album. Record. First album. First yeah. album. It's 1983. This is in the fucking warehouse. So I'm like, come on. Just, right. But like I said, it, it's it's a uh, it's their open op- the opening act. You know. So it is what it is. Um, number nine for me was actually. It doesn't surprise you. This is actually people. A lot of people probably say it's one of the probably different record of Metallica's, but it's not mine. But I like it a lot anyway. But you know. Ride lightning. <clears throat> okay. It it might be my mo- my my least most least listened to album of, of all the bunch. Actually, even what you least listen to the Sanger and uh and Clem all. Yeah, so <clears throat> I I have I have ride the lightning a little bit higher than you. Um, yeah, you can do that. It's it's not number one, but um, it's not, it's not in top it's... three though, which is surprising because people have it in top three. I have it in top three. Oh, but, it's in top three, but I. But for me, my my two through four is fluid. Like I feel like at any point in time, my songs that I have in between two, three, and four, mm-hmm. they could be anything at any time. <clears throat> um, but we'll we'll talk. Why why don't you like ride the lightning? No, why like aren't it. you? Why why is it lower? I feel for like you? for me, I I think for me the vocal vocally speaking, to me James didn't become really James until puppets, right? That was the first sign of James really getting into being comfortable with his vocals as a vocalist yeah. for a band. You gotta remember too, also James was not supposed to be the singer of this band in the first place. True, James just did it because they had no choice. They just they, they right. wanted to sing, so he just started singing. And to me. Even though he did Fade to Black and you know all those songs in there, of course, mm. to me he doesn't feel comfortable or sound right. comfortable as a vocalist at all. Puppets. Yeah, I love I love Call of Cthulhu on this. Oh, well, oh yeah, of course. Uh, I love I love Ride the Lightning for whom the bell tolls. Those two songs back to back. Of course. Um, C- Creeping Death. Creeping Death's good. Um, but yeah, it, it's definitely I can see where people might not have it high. Um, but yeah. Number eight for you. Um, my eight is Saint Anger. Okay, why so high? Um, it's it because it's not that bad. Like I agree with you, hundred percent. I, I don't. I, I don't think it's the worst Metallica album. Um, there's, it, it's always going to get looked at weird for multiple reasons, and it makes perfect sense. Mm. One, the band is going through a time of transition. This is the first album without Jason. My favorite member um, of all time for the record. Jason leaves the band. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a hot take. Um, <laughs> Jason Newsett leaves wait, wait, the wait, band. Wait, 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 what is the hot take? Him leaving the band or me? My favorite, you favorite think that Jason Newsted, Newstead, the like stockest Metallica member. My favorite member of all time. Um, is your I favorite ice cream flavor vanilla? <laughs> I, 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 I play bass because of him. That's why. 
Ah, uh, okay, okay. It's, 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 a, it's a more of a personal thing for me, and he's local okay. too, also on top of that. So. Yeah, no, he's he's saw like base base like the player wise, like absolutely fantastic. Like, yeah, there's a reason why he sticks around and he fills the shoes of Cliff. Right. But Saint Anger, Saint Anger is a weird album because one, Jason's gone. Two, the producer of the album. He's playing bass Bob the Bob. entire album. <laughs> yeah. So the studio album itself is not Metallica. It's three dudes from Metallica and their producer. Yeah. They don't because because you also remember this this album is also being recorded during the time that they're filming some kind of monster, and they actually acquire Rob during toward the end like of the, the recording yeah. Yeah. recording of this. Um, so, but I, I love St. Anger, like frantic. I love frantic. I love sweet Amber. Um, what else is on? I actually ranked on, on Jim's podcast back in uh, 2020. I don't know if you heard it yet. We actually did a whole episode, uh, or most of the episode ranking the songs on the album, like rank them in order. Yeah. Yeah. I think the top three songs, frantic St. Anger and some kind of monster really good. I love Sweet Amber and the Unnamed Feeling. Yeah. Um, I feel like those two songs are cl- like those two songs feel like mid vintage Metallica. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like the Unnamed Feeling could have easily slipped onto like an And Justice for All or a Black yep. album or something. Unnamed Feeling, Unnamed Feeling could had again production placed onto this too. Could have been one of their biggest songs on their entire discography. Yeah, for sure. Honestly, I, I just um, love I that, that song. That. Yeah, um, but yeah, um, like for me, like for me, like for, like I, I love Rob, but it took me mm. a long time to accept him fully because I, I'm a right. Jason Mark. Jason to me was the yeah. band guy. He was he in terms of stage presence to me, he's the best. Don't there was just me. something when I first when I first saw Rob in some kind of monster. Yeah, and just like the way he just looked like a bass playing spider. Yeah. He's just getting down and like crawling in the way yeah. he just plays yeah. the bass. And I'm just like this dude showmanship. Like oh, he's amazing. And, and, yeah, and, and me and me and something had nothing to do with him at all. Zero it had, right. had to do with me losing Jason. Jason, right. was, I mean, killed me when he left the band. But it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, uh, it killed me too to a certain extent because it's like you don't want to see Metallica break up. You don't want to see your favorite bands break up for any reason, right. and to, for for them to break up because. Jason felt like the odd man out, and and he was correct for the record. He, and even they even they admit that everything he said ended up playing out the way it, it should have because Jason was right in it all along. Right, like it, he definitely he filled the need, but it was it, it it still is kind of it's Kirk Lars and James and whoever the fourth is because yeah. nobody's ever going to be Cliff. Right, exactly. So Rob's close. Rob is close, but yeah. Um, and Rob's been a band thir- 20 years now. Can you believe that? Jeez. Um, oh my God, I'm old. 20 years. And I'm telling you, it's been 20 years. He's he's actually the longest tenured bassist now in, in, in the band as of uh, as of this year. <sighs> I hate um, everything. It's crazy. Um, eight for me was Garage Inc. Let me tell you why okay. I like Garage Inc. a lot, actually. Yeah, you, you say you, don't, you, know, you, you like covers, but not. I, I, get, I get all that. To me, the success of this album for me is that even though we know these are cover songs, they sound like Metallica songs. Yeah. Metallica has a, a way of Metallica, Metallica-ing songs that don't belong to them. Metallicizing. Um, this, uh, Metall- Metall- there we go. Metallicizing the songs. So like songs like Astronomy, songs like um, like even the Merciful Fate Menly. Like I'm not a fan of those bands necessarily, but if I heard that song for the first time by Metallica, not knowing it's a cover mm-hmm. song, I think it's a Metallica song. Not a cover song. Yeah. So that's why I love Garage Inc. so much. They they find ways to make it sound like Metallica. Even Sour Cadabra, which is a Sabbath song, sounds like Metallica. Part, part of it, part of the reason why I didn't like the album too is because when I first heard the album, I didn't know it was a bunch of covers. Like I there knew I knew Whiskey in the Jar was a cover. I knew Turn the Page was a cover. But I thought like Tuesday's Gone was an original song. And I thought all the others were original songs. I'm like, none of this <laughs> crap. None nope. of this crap Metallica. This is all garbage. And then I get, I find out that they're all covers. And I'm yeah. like, ah, that makes sense. No wonder I don't like it. It's not Metallica music. There you go. 
Uh, number seven for you. Death Magnetic. All right. Death Magnetic. That, that yes. album gets lost a lot. I'm gonna get lost a lot, actually, now, as your time goes on. One of the most <sighs> lost records. I, I like that album for the record, so I'm a little higher than that, actually. Yeah. I I really love Death Magnetic. Um, the middle, the middle of the album with like Broken Beaten and Scarred, Day That Never mm-hmm. Comes, All Nightmare Long, Cyanide, Unforgiven Three. Um, yeah, that's a question on Unforgiven Three real quick. So hot take here, Metallica take. Uh-huh. I think Unforgiven is of the three Unforgivens. Obviously, the original one's yep. the best one of the three. You no. can't compete with that. To me, it's, no. it's one, then three, then two. It's two, three, one. I might have been a big fan of two, actually, to be honest with you. I hate one. I think, well, first off, the first one is actually one of my five favorite songs of all time. Um, Metallica songs of all yeah. time, top five. I get, I get that it's a great song, like, but it's personal preference for me, and it's like, yeah, yeah. I don't get excited. I don't, like, I, I know it's not necessarily a song that's supposed to make you feel excited, but, like, I feel like music, Musically, I like two. I like two better than one. I like three better than one. Uh, but the hot one take definitely is, the hot takes, the right, the hot take to me is three being higher than it is. That's the hot take. Yeah, I love. I yeah. love Unforgiven three actually a lot. Unforgiven three take, is though. really good. Yeah, like, very underrated. Very underrated. But I, I will always love two. I will always love two way more than one. I think it's just because there's more. There's more instrumental in it. Unforgiven is so simplistic. But then you get to the breakdown. And like the breakdown is amazing. I mean, the very end of the song, the last like two minutes of the song to me, give me goosebumps every time. Right. Like it's very, it's so good, but yeah. it's seven it's not, for it's, me. It's not for me, baby. Right. That's okay. I get it. Uh, seven for me. Reload. Okay. Reload is six for me. So let's, 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 let's just tag team on this one real quick then. Yeah. So Reno to me, like the standouts are amazing. Like Memory Remains, it's incredible. Yeah. Uh, fuel, love Fuel, hate Fuel live. Love Fuel yeah. in studio. Fuel, re- fuel live doesn't feel the same way live. It's a right. weird thing for me. Don't, I think they, yeah. put extra, put the, they put extra stank on it. Right. Um. And Fixer is actually one of the most underrated, record, underrated songs in the entire discography. Fixer. Um, my second favorite Metallica song of all time is on this album. Which one is it? And it's L- Low Man's Lyric. Oh, yes! Love Low Man's Lyric. Yeah. Possibly top 10 um, song for me on the discography, possibly. Like, I love Low Man's Lyric. My number one's probably gonna... Uh, you may know my number one. I've talked about it before. Um, I remember, to be honest with you. But, like, Low Man's Lyric, I can listen to Low Man's Lyric right now that droning undertone throughout the entire song. My it, 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 it tells a narrative reality. story. Yes, I, lo- I love that song. It's so Goosebumps. good. Confess yeah, all to the rain. <laughs> it's so effing good. Man. I love it. With it's a dirty a, hand. It's definitely a top three song on the record for me. It's, it's, it's Remains, it's Fixer, and it's, well, it's top four, because I love Attitude also, actually. Yeah, for me, it's Fuel, Memory Remains, Unforgiven 2, and Low Man's Lyric. The but, problem, as I said, a problem. The only issue of reload, uh, I, I, I mean, for, and I know it was birth of the same sessions as load, but I am a right. hardcore load fan. You'll see how why, how, how, how high I'm up, up on there. Is that I feel like this album has probably the most filler metallic, metallic material of any album. Like, I like you know, the filler, but and that's why that's why I have it under load. Right. It's like. Load is very um we'll talk about load soon. Um yeah. but I got pretty high actually. I got pretty high. There's a lot of filler. There's a lot of filler in reload. Um but I think that reload I think it is fair to have reload under load because mm-hmm. reload is the continuation of what was really good in load which is Metallica reinventing themselves. Mm-hmm. And becoming like pop rock. What's funny though, t- uh, Tim? Though is that like, Load and Reload, while they are from the same sessions, they actually slide two different records. Mm-hmm. They do t- 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 two different records actually. Like yeah. Load sounds much more alternative. Reload yeah. sounds more rock. 
Yeah. It's weird, right? Right. Um, we're on six, right? So six for me. Six. six was for you. Six for me was death, was death magnetic. Um, okay. So we have our me, we had our six and seven flipped. Yeah. Um, magnetic for me, like the, the first song. Um, that was just your life. It's actually, my, my my top ten favorite songs of, of, of all their songs. I love, I love okay. that song. Um, there's actually a lot. Of, there's actually a lot of really good material on this record. Um. That don't get yeah. a lot of love. All night long is a great song. Cyanide, you said cyanide. I love my apocalypse. I love the closer. Um, yeah. I think the production, I think the production's album is a little too raw, also. Not bad as St. Anchor mm-hmm. production, but to me, if this album had a little more of the hardwire two seasons touch to it, production-wise, this is Rick right, this is Rick Rubin on the record. Rick Rubin did the production of this record. And supposedly yeah. he, they were pissed at him after this record. Mm. Apparently he was very lazy and all this shit and didn't want to do much and just click a check and all that and that's why they didn't work with him again. But this is the last this is the last album too off of um this is their last album Electra? before they had or no, this is a Warner Brothers album. Mm. They, well, were, part- they were what go ahead. Electra is Saint Anger and then they have blackened. They they create the blackened label. Right. Technically, for, Warner Brothers um, and Electro. Technically, Electro was a subdivision of, of Warner Brothers, but yes. Yeah, yeah. But they're actually um, Warner Brothers proper. Right. For Death Magnetic. I do like I, I, I like Magnetic. There's a lot of a lot of good gems in that on the record also too. Um. Yeah. All right, number five, top five Load. now. Load. Okay. 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 Um. Okay. The Me- Metallica reinventing themselves after like you know thrash metal has gone away. And so they need to be something. And now they're like, they cut their hair and everybody loses their mind because everybody's got their hair cut. And, uh, but ain't my bitch until it sleeps. King, nothing hero of the day. Those are like core Metallica songs. Um, it also has a couple of like hidden gems on it with like mama said and Ronnie and even like, um, the, uh, Outlaw Torn and Thorn Within, like there's Outlaw there's like a rated. couple of like they're like B side tracks, but they're solid. It mm-hmm. it's it's a it is an almost full album for me. I'll speak more on Load um when I get to mine because Load is actually the biggest inflection point for me of my fanhood. I'll get to that in a second when yeah. we get to Load for me. Five for me is a black album. Okay. And I have black. I have black a little bit higher, but uh Yeah. Um obviously a black album we we know uh, the biggest selling metal album of all time. It's one of the biggest selling albums of all time, period. Um you know, obviously Sad Man, Sad But True, nothing else matters. It's a great record. I will say there are elements of this album that are a little overrated. Like there are some filler material here though, for um in terms of like like if you get past the hits, there's some some songs that are like okay, they're okay, but like, do they make the album great? Not necessarily. I think the hits make the hits make the album great. Um, my favorite song on the album though was through, through the Never. So, right. I love through the Never. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about Black in a little bit. Yeah, Not, but Black album obviously too... is, is there. Yeah. I, I wouldn't call them Magnum Opus, but it is definitely the the, the album that put them on the mainstream meta, obviously. For sure, because it was it was a crossover album for them. Like, right. like they had been great. They did their heavy work in their first four, and then it's mm-hmm. like Black happens. I think Black is a perfect album. Like, it is. It, it, you you can put in the album and listen track one to track twelve, and not really skip. Like. Right. Some of the hits are really great. Like the, the the big hits, Sandman, uh, nothing else matters. Sad but true. Sad but true. Like to a certain extent, but I think really Sandman, Sandman, and nothing else matters are like core prime Metallica, and then like a couple others are high, but they're definitely like not in that rarefied air. They're like one A tracks. There's a lot of above average Metallica with a few like really standout goat tracks. And then Mm -hmm. all the rest are solid songs. And that's what makes it good. Like there's nothing that doesn't, I think everything thematically makes sense with the black album. Um, 
I, I, I just, I love, I love through the never. I love don't tread on me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the family's awesome too. Yeah. Like I love watching, it, I love, it, I love watching, I love watching the album. I love watching the making of the album too. Like that, that, to me, yeah. that was the album. That that was actually that documentary was what, what got me into one new music. Watching them behind yeah. the scenes, uh, making that record. You know, as a kid. So, all right. So that's number five. Um, mm-hmm. Number four. You did number five already. You did, you did five, right? I did five. My five is load. Right. Four is what? And justice for all. Hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the first album. Post Cliff, mm-hmm. um, Cliff is credited for one song, I think. So on to live to die, I think it is. To live to die. To live is to die is is yeah. credited to Cliff. Right. Um, again, this is this kind of it, it feels very similar to um, the Black Album in a way, um, but I think that the big songs are like huge. Like one. and justice one. Those are like one is an epic. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> like one is an epic. Yeah. Um, and justice is very, very good. Harvester of Sorrow, very, very good. Um, blackened, very good. Um, but to me, like a lot of the other stuff, a lot of the other stuff on the album doesn't necessarily click for me. I think if I like really combed over this list again, I might even put and justice for all under load, but I feel like mm-hmm. that's a little bit sacrilege. Um, Cause and justice for all is really like, I think it's, it's the perfect, it's the perfect fourth album of that stretch with, with the, the core four at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, like Kill 'em All does its part, it sets the stage, and then the next three albums with Lightning, Puppets, Puppets. and and Justice, it is a perfect p- wave and like peak and valley, and like, and Justice starts to settle them in, they find their groove, and then with Black Album, a few years after that, um, to your point, to your point though, it's a great bridge of going from Cliff. To, to Jason. Jason, and then going to mainstream, mainstream, right. and bring it, bring it to the world, really. Right, for sure. I agree with you on that that part for the record. Um, four for me was going to shock you. It's Hardwired. Wow. Okay. Hardwired is hard, the song. Hardwired number one is in my probably a top ten for me. Um, song on on their time discography. I, I remember the I remember the day. It might be on my Snapchat still actually because I remember the the day they dropped the song out of nowhere. Um, yeah, I actually filmed myself listening to the song the entire time, and when I was going fucking ape shit. I thought Hardwired was good when they like just sneaky dropped it. Yeah, and, and I remember, I, I remember doing a podcast. I, you know, I'll send it to you when I get a chance. I did a podcast that night. My wife, okay. my wife was up, was up in um, North Carolina visiting her uh, grandfather who passed away, and so that song dropped on a Friday when I was actually, I was actually home by myself. And I recorded a podcast that, that same night, mm-hmm. reacting to the song. And um, just remember talking all, uh, a lot, also a lot about the fact that this is the first time a Metallica album was going to enter the enter the sphere under under huge social media. Like, right? I was Death, just about to say that. Like, I didn't mention Death Magnetic didn't mention was it when, right. Death Magnetic yeah. was uh, was still in that. It, it, yeah, we had we had MySpace. The page was still kind of new at the time, but there was still a little, that old old school. Okay, I'm going to go to the I'm going to go to the store and buy the record thing and right. this and that. This is the first time they actually had to market the album through social media, and that, yeah, because I mean, that was just fascinating. I, I remembered that, like, the Metallica YouTube, yeah, they did like small eight to ten minute, like, mini docs, yep, of like almost every song on the album. Where they like it was the music video, but it was also like cut to James or Rob or whoever talking about the vibe of the song. Or talking about the making of the video, um, like I, I vividly remember the Moth into Flame video, mm-hmm. um, and them talking about their feelings making this song and how they really wanted to like give that illusion of like the Moth being enamored by the light 
and being yeah. drawn to it. And then by the time they get too close, they realize it's not a light, it's fire, and they can't they can't they can't avoid their own destruction. Right. Um but yeah, it, it definitely pushed the envelope for them. Um I think that they lean too heavily on that with uh with uh 72 seasons. I think that you they tried to use the playbook they did from hardwired for 72 yeah. seasons and it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like the wildcat <laughs> like the wildcat offense really mm-hmm. great the first time that everybody runs the wildcat and the right. dolphins just absolutely crush it then every head coach every defensive coordinator in the nfl had an entire off season to just figure out hmm so the running back's just gonna carry the ball interesting we just hit him real okay. hard yeah. And like that's kind of like it, it was cool when they did it for hardwired, and then they kind of spiced it up a little bit. Like, well, not spiced it, they actually like they took spice away from it for yeah. for the 72 seasons release, but similar vein of like spurting out a couple of tracks that they think are gonna get traction before releasing the big the big record. To your credit, though, I will say the comparisons of the two records, though. It's apropos because I actually have the same feeling. The, the difference is I, I do like the record now again, but this is yeah. also why I want to give it time to settle before I actually yeah. rank this thing. Because I think once I have time to sit with it, I'll probably rank it. But I do and agree with you be, on the comparison. And that may be why I've got 72 seasons as my la- my least favorite album and yeah. hardwired next. Yeah, <laughs> there's that's a good point. That's a good point. A good, that's a really good point. There's very good reasons. So I'm not. Yeah. I'm not sure what what's what. But yeah. uh, what do you got? So you four. You had four, four. hardwired. Three, three for you. Black album. Okay. Okay. For all the reasons I said before, like you get into this era, you get into this seat, this section, and it, you're talking rarefied air. Like yeah. you're talking. You're, you're talking like the best of the best of Metallica, right. and like I said before. I feel like between and Justice for All, the Black Album, and my two and my one, you could pretty much rotate any of those at any given time, however you feel, mm-hmm. and it could be the best Metallica album of all time. Um, my, I mean, I feel like my number one is going to stay the same, so that's why I said my two, three, four are very, right. very nebulous. Um, I will say like, my three through five is actually a little, a little more fluid than people give credit for. Like the black album could be number three if I wanted to one day. Right. So my number three, though, is Puppets. Okay. All right. Uh, I think Puppets is fantastic. I think if you want to, I always say if you want to introduce a fan, someone who's not into rock music, but wants to get into rock music or get into Metallica, it, an album to share. It's, it's it's the black album. Mm-hmm. If you want to get into someone want to get into metal, and that that likes rock, right? Wants to get into metal, something heavier. You show them the master puppets. Gotcha. To me, that that this the structure of that album, the the song, the orchestration of all the songs, and forget battery and obviously San Antonio is amazing. My my first song on the record. But look at the songs like the Social Heroes, Never Messiah, mm-hmm. uh, Damage Inc. You know, those kind of songs, you know, mm-hmm. things that should not be amazing live, too, especially. Huh. I mean, this is the magnum opus. In my opinion, this is the magnum opus. This is like, yeah. So, like, the, the only artist I, I, I love more Metallica in the world is Michael Jackson. This is the, this is the, this is the thriller. Okay. This is a thriller. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, to me, this is like, okay, this is the be all, like, it's not my favorite album, but it's the album that people, Look at as okay. This is their okay. This album and then and then uh, and then uh, the black album or the two albums that stand out the most of of yeah, the bunch. It's, it's definitely the monolith of everything. Right. Like so that 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 to me that's like the the thriller. They're they're bad. I'm gonna call it so to me that's um yeah. We're ahead. running out of numbers at this point, so we're getting close. <laughs> to that so number two for um, you is who number two? Ride the lightning. Okay. Okay. It's an emotional pick for me. Like I mentioned when we started this all, it's the first album of Metallica that I really got introduced to. Um, right. The the opening tracks with, you know, Fight Fire with Fire, Ride the Lightning from the Bell Tolls, Fade the Black, Bam, 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 Bam. 
that's a really solid front four. Um, I love the instrumental call Cthulhu. We've talked about Ride the Lightning all together. We don't need to, to talk about it more. But for I me, I especially love Cthulhu S and M. Cthulhu, yes, first one. Oh, yep. Yes. So if I'm gonna guess you, you've got Number Injustice two? at two. Nope. Okay. I thought the Number way one. you were talking about load that you were gonna have load at one. Load, load is two. Okay. Load is two. Now here, so I, I wanted to save this for this part here because it's important. So, what what year you became a fan of Metallica? What year? You remember what year you became a fan of Metallica? It was two thousand and two or three. So around St. Anger. Okay. So yeah, I became I became a fan in ninety six. Load. <laughs> right. Yes. However, I became a fan of the band before Load dropped. Okay. Months before that, I became a fan of Metallica in March of of ninety six. Okay. Until until Sleep didn't drop the first single to like May. Yep. So I'm getting Metallica in Mar- in February March, right? I'm listening to the Black albums, to all the old stuff and stuff. And it's like, oh, wow, this is really good stuff, man. I like I'm enjoying this, and they're really heavy. Da, da, da. Then I hear until it sleeps, like, okay, this is kind of heavy, but a little softer. Then I go to Circuit City, buy the the old album. When it comes out in June, it was it June twentieth? I think it was June, whatever it was June, yeah, June, 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 no, June, June 6th, June sixth, yeah. June, yeah, yep. yeah, ninety six. And this album sounds weird. Like I don't get this. This is weird. So now they have short here. The the music sounds different. I like it. Yeah, but this is this is kind of. And again, remember too, also the timing of also of this where I'm just becoming a fan like months before this. And I'm oh, I'm hearing his new album coming up soon. Thinking it's gonna be something similar to Black Album, and it's totally out of left field. Yeah. So it was a little bit of like a weird transition for me. Like this is weird, but I like it, and I st- I, right. I I I just stuck with it. And low it, to me, step. It's a change up. Yeah. And there's, and like I can see where like Metallica fans, like if, if Metallica fans listen to this podcast and they absolutely hate us, like I know I did, did some research of like other people who've made lists of Metall- their Metallica albums, and a lot of people have low re- load and reload very low, and I can understand why because these aren't your traditional Metallica heavy thrash albums, like. These are definitely like the change up records and the, this is Metallica radio. Like until it sleeps King, nothing hero of the day is about the closest, like it's a Metallica ballad. Like, um, mama said, mama Mama said, I mean, a country song full out country. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I enjoyed it. And, and, and they, look, and the thing is, I understood people, the, the fans who were there longer before I was from 85, 86. And you see them in fucking back in the day with Ozzy back in 86 and even the black albums from the green, whatever. I, I can see people getting a little pissed. I, 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 I can I can sympathize to some degree. Like, this is weird. This is different for me. It was weird because I, right. I transitioned quickly within a three month period where like, OK, this is who they are. And all of a sudden they're this is not who they are anymore. Like, oh, this is weird. But I stuck with it. And. You know, the rest is history, you know, and and load to me load. I think load is age well actually. Load yeah, really, really well actually because I I I really do love load with with all of my heart. Yeah, that's number, number two for me. So ain't my bitch, and to me, my fandom started here. So I always, I always have yeah. that. You know the the, the album. and I remember the promotion record too. I remember remember the promotion for it leading up to it, the mother load contest. Where they're in the truck and they go to mm-hmm. eat, different cities and stuff to uh you know play random cities and stuff and play. So I, I was invested. It, it was something fresh for me at the time. So Load will always have a preference for me because of that of the promotion of the record right. and everything else. Sure. And, and then seeing see for the first time on, on that tour and at, at sixteen turned seventeen, sixteen at my mom's house because at the time I couldn't go anywhere. And also, I was raised in a very strict Christian home, so Metallica was a no no mm. in my house. So I, oh I, yeah, I, for sure. So I, I had to stick the shit in my my house the and only, stuff. The only thing that could have been worse is you being a Kiss fan. Yeah. Or I'm a, ACDC. I'm, I'm not a Kiss guy. I'm not a Kiss guy. At all. I'm not either. I it, it takes everything in my power for me to just not yuck on James's yum every time. Although I have to Kiss. admit though, and and I think James Jim will actually will actually will actually uh, like this. 
I've sort of like discovered a couple of songs I do like from them. A couple more songs I like from them. I'm not. A, I'm also a fan, but there's a couple of songs that are like it's not bad actually. But I'm not a Kiss fan. For the record. A broke watch is right two times a day. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> so number one for you, of course, is puppets, Master of Puppets. Right? Yes, yeah. that, 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 no surprise there. No surprise. Master of Puppets. Um, I kind of I didn't put this as like my fi- like. When I made the list, like I made it as like the greatest Metallica albums. Like there's definitely things I would rather listen to maybe sometimes Mm -hmm. more than Master of Puppets, but it is really hard to go against, as you said, like this is their magnum opus, like battery, puppets, things that should not be sanitarium. Those four are like prime Metallica songs that like if you don't hear three or more of those songs on at concert, you feel ripped off. Yeah. Like they need to play battery or pup. Like they need to play three of the four of these. And yeah. like, these are like seminal Metallica memories. But of course, the reason why this is number one for me is because that is my favorite song of all Metallica's discography. And that is Orion. Oh, I, God, I love, it. I love, love Orion so I so, so so like and I list I I've I love all of the covers of Orion. There's um the band Mastodon does a cover of Orion. I just I just saw last month. Really live. I just saw him live last month. Mastodon does a cover. There's also um a I think oh I need to make sure I don't want to speak at a turn. Are they husband and wife? Are they Who's just that, uh... friends? Um, they are a guitar duo. Are they married? I just want to know. They covered it. It is uh, Rodrigo y Gabriela. They are mm-hmm. Mexican acoustic guitars. They they just play instrumental music. They play flamenco guitar. Okay. And they cover Orion. Acoustic like Latin guitar. I gotta check it out. And it is so good. Because like they do the drums on the guitar. Mm-hmm. So when you when you're when they're playing and you hear like the very beginning where it's very faint and then you hear the drum yeah. kick in, yeah. Imagine the slap of a like hollowed out acoustic guitar, it, it just <clears throat> hits. So for me, um, just because of like the power that Orion has over me as yeah. being like my number one song, I can't not put probably the 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 best pound for pound Metallica album with my favorite song on it. At number one, yeah, I, I I agree. I like I like that. Um, my number one, of course, I I think this teased it earlier. Justice for all. Yep. Uh, my favorite song of Metallica is also on that record. You want to take okay. a guess which one it is? I'll give, I'll give you two guesses. I'm looking. Um, it's probably obvious. It, 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 it might be obvious. We'll see. Is it blackened? Yep. First try. Look at that. I fucking love blackened. That's a like. It's a really solid opening song. I want to. That song just want to break something. I, I I hear that fucking opening riff. I want to take this fucking fist to a fucking wall. <laughs> oh god. Um, but yeah. Uh, that record. Like I said, it's funny because like, I don't listen to the album as much as you as you as you as you think. Like, it's I heavy. heard albums. Uh, but it's fuck like to me when I play that album though, when I'm in the mood for that record, to me that's when to me with Metallica and and that's even with the flaws not having any, any bass sound and it's just like a cardboard box and all that. But even with all that, it's just to me they were come off with the cliff death and the anger yeah. and all of that. I can relate. Right. That was the first album I think when I got into Metallica in '96. Even though Low came out after that, mm-hmm. that was the first album that grabbed me. Like I I like Kill 'Em All, Kill 'Em All, and Four Horsemen was the first song that got me. But the first album that grabbed me was Justice for All. Right, so, and, I, and I guess what we can like, what we could talk about for like the albums is like, 
sometimes like the best, like some of your favorite stuff, like for example, load your favorites, your favorite, um, your like your actual favorite album probably of Metallica is like the chain pizza that you like every time you order pizza, you go to the one pizza place Mm -hmm. and you get the same pizza and you can, you can eat it once a week. You could hear that album once a week and everything's good. Cause a feel good album. It's a feel good food. Whereas right. like and Justice for all master of puppets, it's like, okay, it's that special occasion. We got a, one of us got a big promotion at work. We're mm-hmm. going to the steakhouse and we're ordering the tomahawk. Like it's, yeah. it's fine dining. It's, it's, it's high cuisine. You can't eat it all the time because you get spoiled of it. Yeah. So exactly. you, 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 gotta, you get it. You get it. Yeah. That's how music is. It. And like, I, that's why I think yeah. there's like, there's no, just like with wrestling, music, sports to a certain degree, too. Like, mm-hmm. there's always going to be the conversation of like, who's the best? What's the best? And best is subjective. Um, of course. Because really, it's like what, it, it's what drives you as like the listener. And I'm actually like, because I wrote down both of our lists. We're not okay. that far off, honestly. Like, other than the uh, the, the new album and then, yeah. and then hardwired. Yeah, hardwired, <laughs> hardwired, 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 hardwired has the biggest jump. But like, Injustice was four for me. Load was five for me. Master Puppets was one. Black Album was three. So like, mm-hmm. our top five is in in the pocket. Our top five is. The same th- the same four albums except replace hardwired with hardwired. the black with ride the lightning mm-hmm. yeah yeah but we're, we're we're in lockstep with puppets <clears throat> black album and just for all and load and then reloads close well actually mm-hmm. if you look at our top seven like because i had death magnetic seven and you had it six and you had i had reload six and you had that seven so yeah. really our top six or our, our top seven, we have the same albums essentially, and just like hardwired, one or two. I, 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 off. Think, I think Lightning and Right Lightning and, and, and Hardwired and Right Lightning are the two albums that are the most big swings for us. Yeah, like I, I have hard I, I have Hardwired at eleven, and you have it at four, and I have right. Black uh, Ride the Lightning at two, and you have it at nine. So yeah, yeah. seven point swings both ways. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, that 